services. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Those of you in church, physically, in person, you are welcome. Oh, yes. Good to see that people can wake up early and come to church. My God, you are welcome. And by the two services arrangement, we can do more of social distancing. So it's good. So you're welcome. And those of you online watching by the online broadcast on social media, you're also welcome. Welcome to our first service in October. Hallelujah. This is the first service. The second service will start by 11.30. So uh, each of the services will be power packed. The glory of the Lord will come down this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. It's a good time to be alive. To see the presence of God, the power of God in this time and season. Is somebody grateful to God that you are alive today? I said, are you grateful? Oh, somebody shout, I am grateful. I am grateful. If there is anything we must learn how to do, if there is anything COVID has taught us, is that we must constantly appreciate God. We must constantly be grateful. Because there is nobody that is bigger than COVID-19. And what we saw, yes, yeah, nobody. What happened in the White House has taught the whole world a lesson. The president of America is the most protected person on the planet Earth. The most protected. One of the reporters said, White House is a fortress. You can't penetrate the White House. The most protected person on Earth by human standard. They couldn't protect him from coronavirus. Is that serious? Is that the hospital? COVID-19 sent him to the hospital. If God does not help man, man cannot help himself. It's, it's becoming clear now that there's something about God. And the people of God must cherish what they have. COVID-19 does not respect status. It does not respect money. The only thing that puts it to flight, that causes it to bow, is God. So we are grateful. If there is any time we must be grateful, it's now. We are more than grateful that we are children of God. And we have God on our side. Am I talking to somebody that has God on the side? Yes, our hearts and our prayers to our president. He's still our president and this is the time we show love. No matter what, just like uh, some of our fathers in the faith have been speaking. Indeed, they are right. And I join them with my voice that we will pray for the president. The Bible uh, instructs us to pray for our leaders. So this morning we pray that God will touch him and heal him and heal his wife. In the name of Jesus, that God will use this to change his mindset. Yeah. He will not die. He will live. God spoke to me and said, son... The reason why he will leave is because he surrounded himself with people that understand my covenant. I had it clearly. He said there are people that are covenant people with me that he surrounded himself with. People like Paula White. People like Franklin Graham. These are people that carry covenant of God. So, when you surround yourself with people that carry covenant, their covenant can protect you. So this is the time to honor those who carry grace. So if there is any time pastors should be honored, it's now. If there is any time prophet, if people don't know the value of prophet, now they know. So if there is any time, it's now. So to change his mindset, I heard his speech and I saw that his tone is beginning to change. It's becoming more softer. You know, there is, there's, a way, there's a way the devil will hit you. The YouTube will know that if God is not with you, you'd have been gone. Yeah, and I say, Father, let this be the beginning of transformation. Amen. Amen. The day set and visit. Everybody has a day set and visit him. Everybody. Hi, I will preach that message some other time. The day set and visit. Who will save you? The day set and pays you a visitation. Who will save you? The only thing, the only person, the only being that puts Satan to flight is God. No man, no other spirit. He was too close to God to a fault. He was an archangel, the bright morning star, the one that worships God and welcomes God to a brand new day. 
So, what are you to stand against Satan? It takes God who created him to put him to flight. This morning, we exalt him above every other God. I said we exalt God above every other God. Our God is real. Our God is faithful. Our God is life. I said our God is life. He is the source of life. He is the source of life. And if he chooses to give you life, no man can take it from you. If he chooses to protect you, no one can destroy that life. And that is what we want to enforce this morning. Somebody shout victory. Shout it again. Victory. Victory by the blood of Jesus. Victory by the blood of Jesus. Declare with me, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. This morning we'll be taking our communion. We'll be enforcing the covenant of the blood that covers us that protects us god is going to be granting us victory all through this month uh, let's read our from our key scripture this morning first john first john chapter five is going to be a quick swift service if you blink you miss so please i want you to stay connected wherever you're watching from those of you on the conference line and those of you on the social media please stay connected get your bibles get your communion elements ready in fact put the communion the grape juice or what have you in front of your screen while you're watching while you're listening put it by the phone or put it by the screen because after the message we're going to start praying and we'll take communion the power of god will touch you wherever you are as you're watching as you're connecting the power of god will touch you we just wrapped up our three days fasting and prayer crusade and there were people who connected from all over the world from jamaica from from europe from nigeria somebody from nigeria connected and the hand of god touched him all the way in lagos so i don't care where you're watching from if you can connect something will touch you this morning god will touch you this morning if there be anyone that is sick get ready for the miracle of healing in the name of jesus get your communion ready get it ready get it ready get it ready get it ready for somebody that you know that is sick after we pray this morning i want you to go to that person and give the person the communion i'm trusting god for more miracles miracles of healing from COVID 19 this month we are on number 13 and i'm trusting god to at least get to 21 so more cases anybody that is sick of COVID, i want you to get the communion ready for them i will pray you will administer the communion to that person and the person will leave i said the person will leave there shall be healing if somebody believe god shout hallelujah first john chapter five first john chapter five from verse four our key scripture for this month for whatever is, let's read from verse one whoever believes that jesus is the christ is born of god whoever believes that jesus is the christ this is serious whoever believes that jesus is the christ jesus is the christ the anointed one the one who was ordained to save humanity the only one chosen by God. He was the son of God that was sent to this world. So whoever believes uh -huh, is born of God. And everyone uh -huh. who loves him, uh -huh. who begot, uh -huh. also loves him, uh -huh. who is begotten of him. Uh -huh. By this we know that we love the children of God. Uh -huh. When we love God mm -hmm. and keep his commandments. Uh -huh. He said, this is how you know that you are born of God, that you are a child of God. Number one, you love him. The word love is a capel. To love him sacrificially. To love him without condition. To love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. Whether it's snowing, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, whether it's raining, whether you have money or no money, you love him because he's God. That is the number one requirement or condition or proof that somebody is there. Your child just loves you because you are the parent. No matter, he just loves you. The reason why you love your child is because you gave back to the child. The love for your child is unconditional. Even when they mess up. Even when the child is misbehaving, you just love the child unconditionally because the child came out from you. Okay, so Apostle John is teaching us here the secret to victory. We're about to learn there how to reign in this world as a child of God. Keep reading. 
For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. What is his commandment? Sometimes when we hear the word commandment, many people think it's the Ten Commandment. No, it's beyond that. The Ten Commandment is just part of it. When the Ten Commandment was given in Exodus 20, more instructions were also given. By the time you get to Deuteronomy, the whole book of Numbers is full of instructions. You get to Deuteronomy, you see a lot of instructions, how they should live. So when God talks about commandment, he's talking about instructions. Please pay attention this morning. I want to show you how to be victorious over coronavirus and every virus that we come after. That's what I'm showing you. How to live. Some of us have found the secret. That's why we cannot die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us have found the secret. That's why we can pray for those who are sick and they'll be healed. Some of us have proven to the world that there is God and God can heal. The devil thought he would intimidate the church and ministers. By bringing the virus, oh, if few people are caught, go and heal. We've been healing the sick. We are proving it. I'm going to show you the secret, how to be victorious, how to live your life in victory. Anything that comes after you this month, you will defeat it. Amen. And that amen is too weak. You will defeat anything that comes after you this month. Amen. He said the secret is to love God. And number two, you make sure you follow his instructions. I'm not just talking about Ten Commandments. It's very important. Instructions. 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 Uh -huh, read on. And his commandments uh -huh. are not burdensome. His instructions are not burdensome. So if he gives you instruction, it's not to create a burden. Christianity is not difficult like people think. That's what this man of God is trying to teach us. He said, no. If he gives the instruction, it's for a reason. Imagine a child growing up. When a child is growing up, sometimes they don't know the difference between evil and good. They don't know their left from right. So society expects you as a parent to give the child instruction. Don't put your hand on the fire. Yesterday, Pastor Wendy was baking. She was baking cake. Oh, my God. She has resumed. We thank God. <laughs> They thank God for our life. Well, I'm telling you, I saw yes, I was so happy. I said, Father, thank you. Yes, yeah, a big testimony. Uh, yeah, people might not understand, but it's, it's a testimony. So she was baking the cake, baking cake, and the children loves cake, especially David. Hell oh, yeah, yummy cake. And immediately came out from the oven, David was coming to dip his hand. And she screamed, It's hard, don't touch. He doesn't understand that he's just coming out from the oven. Touching that pan will burn his finger. And she gave an instruction. Don't touch because it's hot. Don't touch not because you will not eat. Don't touch not because I don't want you to eat. Don't touch not because I hate you. Don't touch because I'm protecting you. That's what the preacher is teaching here. So when God gives instruction, sometimes we don't know why. But it's for our own good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The God who gives instruction is the God that created the world. So he knows what happens in the world that you don't even have a clue. Do you know that God saw this virus before it started? So he gave instruction to his ministers. Since last year, instructions have been coming. So the ones who listen to the instructions are still standing. The key to victory is what I'm giving you this morning. Instructions. It's a hand read on. For whatever is born of God. Whatever is born of God. Oh my God, I love this. Whatever. It means anything that comes from God. Any instruction that comes from God. Uh-huh. Overcomes the world. The word overcomes means victory. The word overcomes means to prevail. It shows already that there is war on this earth. Because the Bible will never use the word overcome. Except there is war. There is issue. The word overcome means you have entered the world of battle. But this is the secret. Anything that is born of God who created the world and created the people in the world will surely overcome. Because before the world came, 
God has been there. Oh, I thought I would get an amen. God is eternal. God is bigger than the world. God is higher than the world. God has been there. He has no beginning. He has no end. Before coronavirus came, God has been there. After coronavirus is gone, God will remain God. So anything that comes from him has already conquered the challenges of the world. In the world, there will be a problem. But God said the only way to conquer, the only way to prevail, you must start and stick to whatever he says because his words oh my god his words are perfect oh my father my god this month i declare according to god's instruction no virus will touch you i declare again no virus will touch you instructions anything that comes from god the verse one says whoever that is born of God. That is your status. Verse 4 says, anything that comes from God, that is instructions. Once you are born again, your status is connected to God. You are a different breed. You are a different species. It means where others are dying, you will not die. I, I thought I would hear somebody say amen. amen. There are things that happen around you that will not touch you. You are a different breed. And if it then touches you, by instruction, you can erase it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anything touches you, all you need to do is to ask God for instruction. So when we are talking about victory, the tools to receiving victory from God is by following instruction. Every miracle is connected to an instruction. Every miracle. Every miracle. So when God told me when the virus started in March, God said to me, Son, nobody connected to you will die. And I held on to it. Nobody. That's a confidence statement. Nobody connected to you will die. Till today, nobody has, has died and nobody will die. As long as they are connected to this grace. Now, because what I'm saying came from God. Whatever that is born of God overcomes. So when God said it, that statement came from him. Because I'm holding on to that statement. I will conquer the virus any day, any time. Not by my power, but because the one who is behind the scene said it. Now, because he has said it, what I'm supposed to do is to constantly listen and follow instructions. Are you seeing it now? So, when he said, son, I want you to start monthly vigil, fire night. I want you to be doing this every month. Put them to fast. That was an instruction. Are you seeing it now? Son, I want you to be taking communion every two months or three months. Be taking communion every quarter. That's an instruction. So the biggest problem with people is that they don't listen and they don't follow. There's always an instruction. The fact that God told you what you need to do to maintain that status, that confidence status you have, is to listen for the instruction. So there is an instruction for every day. Hmm. Let's read on. Hi. And this is the victory. And this is the victory that has overcome. The that world. has overcome the victory. The victory. It means you will emerge a winner. It's not about you getting drafted in the army. It's about you coming out of the war alive. Are you hearing what I am saying? God is giving us assurance that we will be victorious. Somebody shout victory. Shout it again, victory. So it doesn't matter where they take your name. What matters is what you do with what God tells you. Whenever they take your name this month, you will imagine a victor. 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 It doesn't matter what is happening around you. It matters what you hear and what you do with what you hear. You will emerge a victor. At the end of the day, we will all share the testimony. How we overcame this virus. We are not running away from the US. We live here. This is our land. I'm not packing my back. I will live to testify. That when the virus hit the world, we stood in America. When it shook our president, we stood in America. When it shut down businesses, we stood in America. When it killed people, we stood in America. We shall live to testify. We 
shall live to sing that song of victory. We shall live to sing how we conquer. If you are with me, shout yes. Yeah. yeah. This is the victory. So there's assurance that there's victory. So do not be afraid. Some people are already thinking of changing their citizenship. That's how serious. You don't understand. Especially some of these stars. Yeah. Because of all the racism and stuff. Some of them are already. Yeah. Some of them are buying houses in Mexico. Some of them uh, Gabon. Some of them changing citizenship or getting another citizenship to, to theirs in case. In case. In case. Can I declare it again over America? At least I am here. If this country will not survive, I don't think God would have brought me here. And there are more of us. We are an army in this place. America is going nowhere. God is only shaking the boat to get people's attention again. We shall all live to sing this story. <laughs> when our children grow up, we will tell them, son, daughter, in case I am gone, if a virus hits your generation, this was how we overcame. Do the same thing. Hmm. When you go to school, the reason you get educated, especially from the graduate level, master's and doctorate level, is that you have the ability to do research on the things that have happened in human history in your field. And what you found, and you can analyze and apply to the problem of today, especially at the PhD level, your ability to contribute to academics, to research, to solve problems. How do you do that? You analyze history and issues that happened before, how did they conquer? You take the principle and you apply it to today. So your experiences now is going to be a reference point for your children. Your experiences now is going to be a reference point. I came here to prophesy to somebody. Where the virus think is going to shut your business down. God said I should tell you, you shall have victory. You shall be victorious. Ha, 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 ha. You shall be victorious. If there be anybody listening to me now, God said I should say you, to you this October, you shall be victorious. You will emerge a winner. I don't care what is happening around you. You are coming out a winner. You are coming out a winner. Somebody shout, I'm a winner. Shout it like I'm a winner. I am a winner. Because God is on my side. Whatever that is born of God. And that is the key. What you're doing is it born of God? Is your marriage born of God? Aha, uh -huh. that is the key. It must be born of God for it to overcome. Whatever that is born of God. So what, how does God give birth to things? It's by instruction, it's by speaking. How did Jesus, you know, sometimes I, I said it before, there are many reasons why uh, Muslims don't understand our Christianity is because we don't know how to explain. You're saying God has a son. To them, you are, you, something is wrong with you. How can you say God has a son? God does, so you mean God has a wife? Because you cannot have a son without sleeping with a woman. So are you saying that God has a wife? Thank you. Are you saying that God has a wife? It's because Christians don't know how to explain. Whatever that comes from God, God does not need to sleep. God doesn't have any reproductive organ. Whatever that comes from him, is a child of his. So when he speaks, his word that comes from him is a song. So Jesus is the spoken word. So when he said, let there be light, what came out of him? The light that came out of him became Jesus. It's as simple as that. John 1, the Bible says in John 1 that Jesus was the light of the world. He came from God. It became flesh. So it is that spoken word that became flesh. So anything that is born of God is what he says. So anytime God gives you instruction, you have received something that can conquer the world. My God, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. In the midst of the pandemic, may you receive instruction that will give you millions. May you receive the kind of inventive ideas, creative ideas that will come from God. May you receive relationship that will come from God. May you receive instructions that will conquer the world. Whatever that is born of God. And that is the reason why any church that is born of God will not fold up in this time. Whatever that is born of God. Anybody that starts a church because they want to, will go down. But anyone that starts something because God instructed them cannot go down. 
Christ's restoration was born of God. God spoke clearly and told us to start. That's the reason we can't go down. The virus is too small to shut the ministry down. Because God gave birth to the ministry. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Uh-huh. Read on. This is the victory. This is the victory. That has overcome the that world. That has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. This is the victory. You see, scriptures is so clear. It's just that nobody has explained it this, to, this, uh, to this way or this, in this dimension that will make it very clear to people. Sometimes it looks confusing, but it's not. It's very simple. He said, now, the only way to conquer the crisis of the world, in this world there will be crisis. I've been preparing your mind. You have to adjust your mind and, and understand that we live in a world of crisis. It's just that this one shook everywhere. After coronavirus, what if another one come? So you must adjust your mind that we live in a world of crisis. War can emerge. Anything can emerge. Issues can come up. Unplanned. But God gave us the secret to winning. Instruction. So when something is happening, what we have to do is to connect, number one, to God who is above the system. The word means system. So I have to connect beyond the system. As long as I stay under the system, I'm vulnerable. Do you know how many people are shaking already just because they heard that the president is in the hospital? Do you know how many people have given up hope? Oh my God! The most protected person in God, oh my God, there is no hope for America. Because all their life is connected to the system. What just happened, I've proven to America that the system can fail. Your number one citizen of the world is in the hospital. You are not too big. So, for me to conquer problems, I must connect to the one who is above the system. If Donald is a king of America, king, there is the king of kings. He was elected. There is the one that was never elected. By November, we're going to decide if he will remain or not. But the eternal king, nobody can decide if he will remain or not. I better stay connected to God. You see the reason why the enemy is fighting people, fighting their mind, fighting their faith. Because it cannot get you as long as you're connected to the one who is above the system. The reason why the devil is fighting the faith and the prayer life of people, fighting them against church, is because the only way he can conquer Christians is to disconnect them. So this month, as we take the communion this morning, your faith will never be disconnected. Amen. You are getting reconnected back to God. You are enforcing your faith. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Even our faith. So as we take the communion, we are reminding ourselves that we are connected to God by blood. And there is something the blood can do. I'm going to give you three basic, three basic things that the blood of Jesus does. Three fundamentals. There are other things, but these are the three fundamentals. Then we'll start praying and we'll take the blood. I want you to walk with this consciousness. I, God's DNA runs in me. Anytime God speaks to me. Anytime I serve God, anytime I do God's bidding, I carry his DNA. The word of God carries his DNA. Anything that is born of God, whatever. I, I like that word, whatever. If it's born of God, it must overcome the world. So any marriage that God ordained, whoever that fights it will fail. Ah, Amen. I say it again. Amen. If the marriage was born of God, and somebody said, I will destroy the marriage, the person will destroy themselves. Amen. You are already on the winning side. What you have to do always is to make sure what you are doing is born of God. Not born of your flesh. Not born of your emotions. Not because I feel like. No, 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 no. In this economy today, you cannot survive because you have passion. Passion is not enough. Mm -mm. It must be a calling. Ha! People had passion when they started Jesse Penny. It's gone. People had passion. When they started uh, uh, Lost and Taylor, it's gone. Just yesterday, H&M just released their own. 250 stores going, H&M. Yeah, they were passionate about fashion, but it's not enough to conquer the world. Are you serious now? My skill is not enough. My education is not enough. Challenges can come to that industry that will cripple the whole industry. So it's not enough to have passion. It's not enough to have skill. It must be a calling. That is the only guarantee that whatever that comes, you will remain standing. I'm speaking to those God has called to himself. I'm speaking to those God has chosen for himself. 
You will not go down the tree. You will not go down the tree. Your marriage will not be destroyed. As we take the communion, we are enforcing our victory in Christ Jesus. Our faith is in him. He is above the system. The system cannot swallow him. That is why you cannot be swallowed. Lift up your hands and declare, I cannot be swallowed. I cannot be swallowed. Three things as I close. That the blood does for us. Whatever that is born of God overcomes. No child is born of this world without blood and water. When a child is getting ready to come out, the water breaks. The water is the borderline. It's what keeps the baby intact. Women, am I talking? Uh -huh. So that's how you know that I have experience. <laughs> when you get to that labor room, you are initiated to another, another realm, another new world. Your life can never be the same. If a man is arrogant, if a man is acting up, just drag the man to the labor room with you. That's it. It changes. That. I'm telling you the truth. So when you see men who avoid the labor room, it's because they are avoiding to be broken. The ego, they don't want it to be broken. No man gets to the labor room and see that blood. See the child coming out. That doesn't have a change of mindset concerning the wife and women. You start having respect for women. Wow. So this living being lived inside of you for this month. And he came out. You see an head. You see the head of the child coming out. Like, eh? No, you will respect. Come on, if you're a woman, put your hands together for yourself. We love our women. Any man that does not respect you does not deserve you. Tell the man, follow me to the labor room. Yeah, drag him. Cancel all his flight. Cancel his business trip. Don't let him use whatever work schedule. Tell him, take maternity leave. You we are going to the labor room together. And somebody say amen to that. I just give some women some nuggets. <laughs> so when you get there, for the baby to come out, the blood must gush out. The first thing that happened is the water breaks. The water is the borderline. That was why when God was creating the world, the first thing he did was to separate waters from the waters. The earth came out of water. Hmm. I don't have much time. The earth gave birth to the, the waters gave birth to the earth. A man was created after the earth came out. So water is the suspense, the expanse, what we call the, the celestial realm. Uh, the territorial heavens. Uh, so when we say the first heavens, we are talking about the water. You don't know there's water up there. Where do you think rain comes from? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So water is the borderline. The first thing that happens is that the water breaks. The portal opens. Then for life to come forth, blood must come out. The life of anything is in the blood. Are you hearing me? Now I'm giving you the mystery behind what you're about to take. That is the reason when Jesus was crucified on the cross. Two things happened when they pierced him on the side. Two things also happened. Water and blood came out. That's the reason for it. Water and blood. That water was to open a portal to the heavenlies. And the blood was to give people new life. So anyone that comes to God comes through that portal, that hole. Are you hearing me? That's why he says, he that believes. So once you believe in what he did, you are drafted. You become brand new. You are now a child of God. So anytime you take the blood, you remind yourself, you enforce your status of who you are. The DNA of God is renewed in you. My God, if you carry that DNA, whatever that cannot defeat God cannot defeat you. Can I say it again? If you carry that DNA, whatever that cannot defeat God cannot defeat you. So sometimes why do we get defeated? Because we are not listening. Status is one. Instruction is another. You have to always listen. So every day there's an instruction. When a song comes to you, when you wake up and you wake up with that song, it's an instruction. Don't just sing the song. Listen to what the song means. Because God is speaking to you. When you have a dream, it's an instruction. Pay attention. So every time you follow God's instruction, you will win. That's the secret. Every time. Instruction. Somebody shout instruction. So three things that happens. Number one, the communion brought us closer to God. The communion 
is our covenant access to God. Covenant access is the communion, the blood of Jesus that brought us, that restored us, that guarantees that we are children of God. Ephesians chapter 2. If we read it real quick, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Read it real quick. For by grace you have been saved through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. Uh huh. And, and that not of yourselves. Okay. Now it, re read, F F by grace you have been saved through faith. Read Ephesians 2, verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus. Now in Christ Jesus. You who once were far off. You were once far off. Uh huh. Have been brought near. You've been brought near. Uh huh. By the blood of. Christ. By what? The blood. By what? By what? So anytime you, you feel you are far from God, what you're supposed to do is to take communion. So when people tell me, I don't feel like taking communion because I feel I'm dirty, because I went to club, because I smoke hem, because I, their status is intact. They're, they are Christ, I'm talking about Christians, believers. But they don't go to church to take communion because they feel they are dirty, they are unclean, wrong. When you feel that you're far from God, it's time to take communion. Oh God, I thought I just gave somebody a nugget. It's a mystery. It shouldn't keep you from God because God does not want you far. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. If I feel that my dream life is cut off, it's the time to take communion. Yeah. If I feel that something is not right with me, I don't love church anymore. I, my zeal for God is just dead. I don't love to pray. I'm just tired. It's the time to take communion. Something is pushing you far from him. That's what is happening to you. Because the farther you are, the quicker your destruction. So the enemy cannot destroy you because of that covering. So what it does is to push you far, then it can strike. So when you feel you are far, take communion. My God, by the reason of the communion this morning, anyone that devil has pushed away, I bring you back to God. I bring you back to God. I bring your connection back. God loves you so much that he gave his son. That is why when you take it, the love of God will supersede anything the devil is holding against you. My God, what a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege. So when I'm feeling sick, once I take communion, I re-energize my spirit man. I invoke the DNA of God. Because God cannot die of sickness. So it's a mystery. That is why it produces healing. I'm going to teach you further. Number one, it brings us closer. Somebody shout closer. So your secret to overcoming the challenges of life is to make sure you're hearing God, following instruction. You cannot hear him if you're not close to him. Are you seeing it now? So that is why the first thing the blood does is to bring you close. First, that's the number one thing. Anybody that does not get close to God cannot hear God. To hear him and to obey is what guarantees victory. So the blood brings us closer. Uh -huh. The next thing the blood does, it gives us access to grace when we need it. Access to all the benefits. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews 4 16. The next thing the blood does, I'm teaching good this morning. So that when we are praying, you will understand why we pray with so much confidence. Somebody said, this man of God can rule out online. My God, your man can pray. When you know this kind, when you have this kind of revelation, when you are praying, you don't pray anyhow. Are you seeing it? You pray with so much zeal. Now that I know that once I take communion, for instance, the DNA of God re-energizes itself in me. And one which is oppressing me. How do you think I will pray? Oh, now let me put it this way. The house you live is your house. Either rented or bought is your house. You sign the lease. And for that one year lease, they said this place is yours. And they gave you a key. And you signed. The management signed. And they gave you a copy. Legally, who owns the place? You. As long as that lease is concerned, it is yours. For that moment, you are paying your rent. You, you are keeping to the terms. The lease came with instructions. You must pay your rent at this time of the month. You see it now. Now you are following the instruction. So, 
you are supposed to retain that place. Now, on your way back from work, you got home and you put the key and the door refused to open. Ah! Who changed the lock? Boom, 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 boom. And you had another voice inside your house. Get out from here. What are you doing in my property? Like what? You will look at the number again to make sure you are in the right place. Yeah, you have to look. Ah, am I in the right place? Ah, this is my house. They say, get out from here. The next thing you will do is to call the courts. Somebody has broken into your... That's what you will say. Because legally, it is yours. So, in that incident, will you pack because the person said, get out from here. This is not your property. It's mine. And your lease is not up. Your things are still there. You will enter your car and drive away because somebody said, eh? what will you do? You will what? You will what? Why will you fight? Why? Because you know that it is yours. You are, it is your right. And it's guaranteed that you will what? Win. That is what the Bible is teaching us. If you approach life from this angle, you will always win. Are you hearing me? So when you are praying, that's why we get violent in prayers. Because of what we know. It's not because we, we just love to be. No. We get violent because the enemy is a thief. Is a liar. Is a manipulator. Telling you without the virus. Yeah. When God is still alive. Anybody that wants to kill you this one. May they die for your sake. I said may they die for your sake. Declare I receive victory. The blood of Jesus grant us access to receiving the tools we need to be victorious. That's number two. Hebrews 4, 16, read it quickly. Let us therefore, let us therefore, come boldly, come how, come how, come how, boldly, uh -huh. to the throne of grace. Oh, there is a throne. Anytime there's a throne, it means there is a king. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. So any altar where your name appears this month, there is a throne that is above that altar. Oh no, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. There is a throne. So when we tell people to bring points of contact, when we tell people to present names, when we tell people to sow seed, what we are doing, we are presenting their case before the throne. Because your money could have entered an abolished shrine. Your picture could have entered a demonic altar. They have summoned your name somewhere. So you need a higher throne. You need a throne that is higher than their altar. There is a throne. Somebody said there is a throne. I said there is a throne. He said therefore come boldly. Because of what the blood of Jesus has done. So you are to come. So the problem with our extreme Christianity of today. Is that they tell you that the blood has done it. And it's over. That's not what the Bible says. It says come boldly. So it means your responsibility is always to come. Somebody who refused to come. Continue going without coming. Because he says the blood has done it all. Will be swallowed. Because anytime you come, you receive instruction. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Uh-huh. That we may obtain. That we may obtain. Uh-huh. Mercy. Mercy. What is mercy? Mercy takes out the judgment. Mercy takes out the things that the enemy will use to finish you. Mercy takes out the areas. You see why I said the president will be, will be saved, will be delivered. Because there are people who understand this concept. Who goes to the throne and they plead for mercy. He must have spoken ill. He must have insulted what he did to Joe Biden alone is enough for God to strike him. Insulting him, calling him all kinds of names. I mean, bringing him down. The person you, you rebuke, you cost, is standing now. For doing the right thing, he's standing. You that cost him, you're in the hospital. It's enough. The humiliation is enough. A big lesson. But there are people who are crying for him. It's important we know this. Yeah. I listen to TJJ, I listen to Paula, I listen to Franklin Graham. There are people who are crying. When they approach the, the throne room, they ask for mercy. Yes, we, he did it. He's supposed to go for it. But remember this. Remember this. When the enemy wants to destroy you, the only thing that delivers you is mercy. And what provokes mercy is what you have done for God. So when people refuse to build God's house, the dead devil visits them. They will have no legal standing. 
The dead, the devil visit. I have to preach that message. Father, permit me to preach it. When Satan visit, who will deliver you? Every man has a deal. I'm telling you. Both preachers, both bishops. I'm telling you. I was listening to one this morning. He said the wife almost gone. The wife, life was leaving the woman. This is a man that commands demons. This is a man that is ruling, leading thousands of thousands of nations. Great man of God. He was speaking. He said, my wife almost gone. Life was leaving her. And I told God, I cannot be bringing people from the dead and my own wife will die. Father, I have a covenant with you. If she dies, I will not preach again. That's all. He said, that's all he did. If you allow her to die, no more preaching. I will drop your word. And he walked away. Before he got to the door, the wife sneezed. God quickly. The dead Satan visits. The only thing that delivers you is mercy. Satan doesn't care about your status. He doesn't care. So what instigates mercy is the things you do for God. So anytime you serve God, you worship God, you give your tithe, you give your seed, you do all the things, you are following instructions of the covenant. So anytime Satan visits, when he approaches you, mercy. Oh! Mercy said no. Ah, Travis Green said, when the enemy, when Satan visited him to take his life, Mercy said no. That guy should have been long dead. That is the, the covenant behind his ministry today. So when the enemy came to kill him, Mercy was speaking no. You can't take him. By the reason of the blood you are taking this morning, anywhere they have determined to destroy you, I stand as God's oracle. I stand before the throne room of heaven and I release the mercies of God over you. Anyone that death says amen, the mercy of God will cover you this month. The mercy of God will cover your families. The mercy of God will cover your businesses. The mercy of God will cover your children. Any strange death they have programmed to happen this month. Strange death. Strange death. By the mercies of God, I cover your children. Even the ones in college, I cover them. I am like a shark. I don't care where they go. Where they are shooting, the mercy of God will take them out of there. Can I say it again? Anything Satan has programmed to do this month that will bring destruction to you, by the mercy of God, you will escape. I declare escape! 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 That is the mystery behind the blood. When you take the blood, you invoke mercy. So any blood sacrifice, hiya, katushkata, father, what are you saying? Any blood sacrifice that was done on anybody's name, anybody's picture, iyale ezu tarakaba, anybody that went to an herbalist with your name, with your picture, and presented it with a chicken, and they cut the head of that chicken and poured the blood on the picture just to destroy you. The blood of Jesus is stronger than that sacrifice. As you take the blood, I destroy the sacrifice. The blood is traveling to a place called Bo. Where is Bo? See that long. I heard the name Bo. This morning, I heard God say the blood is traveling to a place called Bo. Whoever that is from Bo, whether you are here or listening to me, hear me. Something tragic is about to happen in that place. Anybody that took your name to a place called Bo to do sacrifices to destroy somebody's marriage. This is about marriage. By the reason of the blood of Jesus, I destroyed that sacrifice. Now, how you will know you are the one I'm talking about? Write it down between now and the end of this year. Whoever that did it, you will hear the person has gone insane huh? or the person is dead. Huh? Judgment is coming. By the blood of Jesus, I give you victory. Somebody shout victory, 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 victory. Shout victory, victory, victory. This is how we prophesy. I believe my sister from UK is listening. She was talking to me yesterday how a first prophet was trying to prophesy to her. And she said, my brother is a prophet and a bishop. This is not the prophesy. Here, cut off your hair. Put it inside your shoe and begin to match it. And she said, show me in scripture. Where? Ha. Huh? This is how we prophesy. I'm going to teach her the difference between witchcraft and prophecy. When first prophet tell you that, take, take red oil. Sprinkle it over your head seven times. I see death. I see death. I see death. Oh, yeah. You're gold right now. You will give gold. You will give everything. 
There's some of us who are genuine. And they want to take our money. Are you seeing it? Some of us are still genuine. I just saw it. Go and write it down. You will hear this testimony. The reason why God gave that prophecy now because I was teaching of what the blood does. That the blood averts judgment by mercy. So somebody's marriage has been judged in a coven in Bohu. The person said, you will not live long in this marriage. This man belongs to me. I'm talking, it's a woman. Now, but the reason of this, that judgment is averted. And when somebody goes to do sacrifice against you, and God intervenes, the person will carry, you with their head, carry the load. So I give back every judgment they place on your marriage. I return it to sender. Somebody shall return to sender. Read it real quick. Let's finish up. Uh-huh. And that we may obtain mercy. That we may obtain mercy. And find grace. Somebody shall find grace. Find grace. Grace is like oil change. When you don't do oil change in your vehicle, what happens to that car? The car can knock oil engine. It will, it will knock off. No matter how expensive that vehicle is. There are a lot of people that look beautiful. They maintain their outside look. But they don't renew the oil. So a woman can be very beautiful, very expensive. But inside is dirty. Inside is empty. So you are beautiful, but an animal is sleeping with you. You are elegant. The car you drive is so great. But no man will settle with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Grace is renewing the oil. Don't take care of the outside alone. You must take care of the inside. You need grace to keep going. Grace that sustains marriages. Ha! My wife was ministering to somebody yesterday. There's grace to sustain marriage. When the marriage looks difficult, you want to pack up. It means you need grace. You don't know how much grace can do until you start having children and you look as if you're running crazy. You want to run away. When you get to a point where you want to run away from your marriage, it means you are at the point of receiving unusual grace. Go and ask every married woman. They've gotten there. Yeah. You to look, ah, this is not what I think. This is not what I was expecting. So I'm preparing your mind now, those of you, before you get married. You will be shocked that marriages have seasons. When you get to winter season, you will think your husband is the worst. <laughs> you want to pack up and run. But after winter, there will always be summer. Ha! Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you will just hang on there, the thing will change again. So grace will sustain you and move you to your next season. Receive grace for marriage. I command grace to be released now. As you take the communion, I renew grace. You will not pack up. You will not quit. You will not shut down. You will not quit. Receive grace. Grace to do ministry. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes we want to quit. Sometimes people don't value us. Sometimes it looks like ah, I'm just spending my life for people. This thing is what nothing. Let me just quit. You need grace. Receive new grace now. Receive fresh grace now. Receive fresh grace now. Receive fresh grace now. Grace to persevere. Even when the miracle is not coming. It takes grace to continue to worship God. After you prayed and prayed one year, two year, three year, the same thing, you're not seeing results. What are you still doing there? It's only grace that keeps you. Oh! But when the result will manifest, you will see your smile will change. People will begin to worship God because of you. I speak by the authority of the living God. This month of October, God has declared it a month of victory. So everywhere you've been defeated since January, this month you imagine a winner. The grace to hand over your victory is being released to you now. I command let grace give you that envelope this month. Grace will give you that packet this month. Grace will give you what others could not get. Grace will keep you standing. If there is anything that is keeping our ministry standing in the midst of pandemic, it's what we call grace. Any man of God that is still standing, grace is on them. I was talking to my friend yesterday. He said, I, I know a couple of pastors that have died, that have preached in their churches. And I said, let's just thank God for grace. Any man, you go to work every day. You go to gas station every day. Mistakenly, some, even if you wear glove, there are days you've forgotten to wear your glove, if you'll be truthful. There are times I get to the store, I, after I enter, I will remember I have no mask, I have to run to the car. Does it happen to you? It happens to me a lot. 
I have to run to the car. Oh, I'm sorry. I will run to the car. And I say, Father, thank you for grace. Between that time, I went to the store. I came back. If I, the virus could have. You see what I'm saying? It's only grace. That's what communion does. So make sure you have a jar of communion in your house. Don't always wait for the day we do communion. That's why I'm teaching you this. It's something you should be doing. Anytime you feel you eat in the dream, you had sex in the dream, something bad happened to you, you wake up, you renew it by this communion. I flush it out. Are you hearing me? So the enemy don't start working on your mind. After all your prayer, see, now it just happened to you. After all, the, it's the devil is so tricky. Your children, they are not listening. Give them communion. Are you hearing me? We'll find grace. The third thing, are you ready for the third one? Are you ready for the third one? Yes, Three things the blood does. Number one, access to God brings us closer to God. Number two, it gives us access to every tools we need to live victoriously. Number three, ensures that we win Satan any day. Amen. Gives us victory over Satan every time. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11, as we pray. Revelation 12, 11. Read and, it for me. And they overcame They him. did what? They overcame. They did what? They did what? Church, they did what? They did what? What is the meaning of that word, overcame? Victory, conquer, prevail. They, they triumph. Is a guarantee. And the word was used in past tense. There's a reason for that. So Jesus is not coming to die again. Are you hearing it? He's not going to come back to die again. He did it once. So your, your obligation is to enforce what he did. So as many that enforce it, the privilege of an overcomer is released on them. They overcame, uh-huh. Him That's by... Satan, uh-huh. By the blood. How? How did they overcome? By the blood. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him by what? The blood. That is why I declare that this month, anything that fights you, you will defeat it. Can I say it again? You will defeat it. You will defeat it. They overcame him by the blood of the lamp. The blood of who? The blood of who? Uh-huh. And what? And by the word. And by the word. Of their testimony. Of their testimony. That is the faith. When you declare the word of God. When you declare the instruction. So the blood gives you that guarantee. What you say that comes from God gives you the victory. So this is the victory that we have over the word that is against us. Even our faith. What we speak. So this month, speak faith. Are you hearing me? Speak faith. Can I say it again? This month, speak faith. Regardless of what the news is saying, keep speaking faith. Because the blood has given you access. Giving you guarantee. Are you hearing me? They're going to shut down the economy. No problem. Oh, is that what they said? I declare, according to the word of the Lord, when they said there is a casting down, I shall say there's a lifting up. My business will not be shut down. You are speaking faith. And I, can I talk to somebody? Somebody shall speak faith. Speak faith. Speak faith. Declare with me, I will not catch the virus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody declare, I will not die of coronavirus. If you are that one, jump up on your feet now and begin to speak faith. I will not die of coronavirus. If you have the symptom, declare, I am healed this morning. Come on, begin to speak faith. Any area you want the blood to walk, lift up your hands and begin to declare. As I take the blood of Jesus this morning, I declare my victory. I declare my upliftment. In this month of October, I declare I shall win every battle. No power will be able to defeat me. Lift your hands and begin to speak faith. Begin to speak now. Jekyll. Come on, speak fake. Begin to speak. Open your mouth and sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Over the month of October, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I enforce the power of the blood. Over the gates of October, even as I take the blood, I enforce victory. It's 
is my month of victory. Anything that is born of God, I overcomes the world. Open your mouth and declare, I am a child of God. Declare it with me, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. God's DNA is in me. Therefore, I will not be defeated this month. Come on, make sure you are speaking faith. That is how it will come to pass. I will not be defeated this month. I will not go under ventilator this month. Somebody declare it by faith now. I will not lose my job this month. My business will not go under this month. Somebody speak faith now. Open your mouth and declare I subdue the month of October I declare the benefit of Christ We manifest in my life Everything I lay my hand shall prosper Open your mouth and declare I shall prevail Over economic recession Begin to declare the recession in the land Will not swallow me The Lord shall favor me The Lord shall favor me The Lord shall favor me this month I shall break through this month Open your mouth make sure you are declaring Wherever you are watching from make sure you are declaring now. Speak faith into your atmosphere Speak faith into your family Speak faith into your marriage My marriage will not break this month Somebody declare Come on speak faith Thank you father Lift up your communion Wherever you are We're going to take the communion this morning and we're going to pray those three prayers. Those key points, one at a time, just one at a time, one at a time. Yeah. We're going to pray those three prayers this morning. Don't take it here, just hold it. Take it, take the cup and hold it. Wherever you're watching from, just hold your element. If you have the communion element like this, the one in the cup that is sealed, hold it in your hand. If yours is not in the cup, if yours... It's the grape juice jar. Just open it. If you pour it in a cup, lift up the cup. If you have the bread, lift it up as we pray. There is power. Power. Wondrous walking power. In the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power. Power, wondrous walking power in the precious blood of the land. There is power, there is power, power, wondrous walking power in the blood, in the blood of the land. Oh, there is power, power, power. Power, wondrous walking power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Lift that cup before heaven. This is the covenant tie we have with our God. We were once far, but through His blood, He brought us closer. Anybody that is not close to God, this is the time to rededicate yourself. You've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never confessed him as the Christ, as your Lord. This is the time. It's a covenant meal. It's to draft you into the kingdom. If the world ends today, where will you go? If you die today of the virus, what will be the state of your soul? That is the guarantee this blood does. It guarantees you life here and eternity afterwards. You cannot go wrong with it. So if you're listening to me right now, wherever you're watching or listening from, you're not born again. Why don't you say these prayers with me? Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and you are the Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Today, I make you my Lord and my Savior. From this day forevermore. Amen. I declare you are born again. Now I release angels assigned to the heirs of salvation to minister to you. I give you the gift of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Welcome to the kingdom family. If you pray this prayer, make sure you write us. Let us know you pray this prayer. We want to follow up with you. Now everybody lift up the blood. 
lift the cup up. You can open the lid. Open the lid. Lift up the bread. Open the lid wherever you are. If you have wafer, biscuit, bread, use it as a point of contact. Lift it up wherever you are. Say with me, this is the body of Christ that was broken for me. By his stripes, I am healed. As I take it, anything called sickness, any symptom of coronavirus, any kind of sickness that is in this body, as I take it, I invoke the DNA of God for healing. I command every sickness in my body to disappear, to be uprooted. For my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. As I take it, I release the healing anointing upon my life. Because it was bruised, no powers from the pit of hell, witchcraft powers, ancestral powers, marine powers, or court powers are not allowed to bruise me this month. It was bruised for my iniquities. Therefore, I declare, anywhere they try to bruise me, as I take it, let judgment come upon them. I will not be attacked this month. I reverse strange arrows. As I take it, I secure my life. I secure my job. I secure my family. In the name of Jesus. Now take it. Open the lid of the cup. Lift the cup up. Lift the cup up and declare, this is the cup of the new covenant. The blood of Jesus that was shed for my soul. As I take it, I enforce the covenant I have with God through Christ Jesus. As I take this blood, I command in the name of Jesus... In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, anything pushing me far from God, whatever that want to destroy my spiritual life, by the blood of Jesus, I destroy it now. Whatever that is attacking my prayer life, whatever that is attacking my zeal, my passion for God, I command it destroyed. As I take the blood, I renew my covenant. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my body. I rededicate my spirit. I rededicate my soul. I rededicate my mind unto the Lord. I will not lose my mind this month. Open your mouth and make that declaration. I will not lose my mind. I receive sound mind. I receive favor. I receive breakthroughs. I secure my destiny in the precious blood of Jesus. Now take it. Thank you, Father. Lay your hands on your head wherever you are. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now begin to declare in understanding. This month I will be on fire for God. This month no evil will befall me. In this month of October. Because I've taken the covenant meal. I will not be a meal to witches and wizards. I will not be their lunch. I will not be their breakfast or their dinner this month. I come against strange attacks. I come against accident. I secure my going out and my coming in. I secure my children. I secure my job. I secure my whole being with the blood of Jesus. I decree I will not be defeated. This month I will not be defeated. My mind will not be defeated. My soul will not be defeated. My body will not be defeated. My career will not be defeated. I receive grace of a winner. Grace to be victorious. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. I release grace upon you. As you go this month, this first day of the month, I command. Let the grace multiply upon you. You will not be defeated this month. Anything that rises against you, I command it to scatter before you. If you say that amen very well, no power will defeat you. You will not be defeated in all your ways this month. The Lord shall protect you. When Satan decides to visit you this month, the blood of Jesus will cast him out. Please say that amen. And uh, Say that amen anywhere you are. Say the amen very well. 
when Satan decides to visit you uh, through any of his agents this month, uh, before he gets to you, the blood of Jesus will cast him out. Uh, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Satan could not enter the houses of the children of Israel because of the blood. Uh, I protect your life. I protect your homes. I protect your careers. This month, be victorious. Uh, receive miracles on every side. Uh, miracles in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give Jesus a big, big praise. Give him a big, big praise.